So this is a Sterling Elite 570, just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. In front of the van you've got your jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake, and also on the front of the van you've got the ATC. We'll demonstrate all this to you in person on the side. In the front locker you have the gas bottles with the gas bottle tie downs. Um, we do have the gas pipe work available should you need it from the regulator to the gas bottles itself. In the front locker we also have the uh, water pickup pipe. As we go down the side of the caravan, you've got your heating and hot water flue. So this is essentially there to allow the hot heat out of the back of the heater unit. Um, and when it's running on gas, also the, any um, heat from the gas system needs to be put outside the van. And then got your wind down legs on either side of the front to stabilise the caravan while it's on site. You'd never lift the caravan with these legs as you potentially damage the floor of the caravan. So you put your bar in through that hole just there and you'll see the nut just through the hole and that is essentially where the leg winds are. So there's one of these, on, one of those on each side at the front of the van and two on the rear. You've then got your water pump connection. So you very simply to connect the water pump, pull back the blue trigger and pull the pump out and push it into the side of the van to lock it in place and release the trigger. The pickup pipe will drop down inside the act roll itself. You've then got your battery box with your mains power lead coming to the caravan from the power on site. And we've put a battery on the van for now just so everything works as it should and so we can demonstrate the motor mover. If you do require a brand new battery, we do have the, the 110 amp leisure batteries on offer during handover for £75 each. Talking the motor mover, we'll demonstrate that while you're here on site and we'll explain how the operation works. And then we'll also talk the wheel nuts to the correct setting so you can see they've been tightened correctly. The side of the van, you've got your toilet flush tank, so you put your key in, open up the tank and pull the flap down. You'd put three and a half litres of water in here and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use, and that is your toilet flush tank. At the bottom, you have your toilet waste cassette. The toilet waste cassette very simply releases by pulling up the orange handle and pulling the cassette towards you. The neck here turns out so you can tip the waste away when the cassette is full. The grey cap here is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. On the back of the cassette you've got an orange pressure relief button so when you're tipping the waste away it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. You'll put one litre of water in here and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. On the back of the van you've got your two wind down legs to stabilise the caravan. Like I said before they are only there for stabilising not lifting the caravan. If you lifted the caravan with these it potentially damage the floor. Coming down the door side of the caravan, behind the door you've got your two fridge vents. The two fridge vents are very simply there to allow hot air at the back of the fridge unit and take some cool air in. And also behind one of those there is a gas flue also. Down the side of the van you've got your 230 volt um, socket so you can put power out to your awning, under bed storage and your barbecue gas point with the last of your wind down legs at the front here. We go inside the van now. Up so we can actually uh, seal up down the control panels. So above the door you will find the master control panels for the caravan. As you can hear the radio is actually working away. I'm just going to stop that for a second so it's uh, not interrupting the video. So I've now turned the radio off as you can hear. But above the door you've got your main control panel for the caravan. So bottom right hand side you've got your main power. So you've got power on. You've got your inter uh, interior, exterior light, sorry. Your dimming lights above the front cabinets on the next button down which you can adjust when it says dim level at the bottom, as you can see. You can make them brighter or dimmer, depending on how you want them. And then you've got the rest of your internal lights then on the button below. Below that you've got your water pump run, which I'll come back to in a second. To the left hand side of that, you have your master control panel for your heating, or your heating and hot water control panel. And again, we'll come back to that in a moment and demonstrate how that works. We're going to go underneath the seat on the right hand side front of the caravan now. Now we've got the power turned on and we're going to make sure the yellow drain down valve is in the correct position. Underneath the seat down here you'll see the yellow valve. Now that yellow valve needs to be parallel with the floor prior to filling the water system up. That valve is upright and pointing towards the bottom of the seat. All of the water inside of the caravan will drain straight back out onto the floor underneath. In here also you have your mains, uh, your consumer unit essentially. Top left hand side you have a system shutdown so you can shut all the power down when the, cow's, the caravan's not in use. You then have your charger switch which you need to make sure is green at all times when you're using the caravan and the heating and hot water switch also needs to be illuminated orange if you are running on 
240 mains. So that is when you're running on 240 mains, both the charger and the heating and hot water need to be lit up. The reverse polarity switch will illuminate red when you're in European countries that require the power reversing. Underneath this panel here, you have your 12 volt fuses for the caravan. And then just inside the door below here, there is actually a um, list of what each fuse is for. Little tip for you when it comes to the household trip switches, if you hit the test switch when you connect it to power on site and the test switch doesn't drop down, it means there is no power coming into the caravan. If you hit, sorry, that's if it doesn't drop down, if you hit the test switch and it drops down, that means there is power coming into the van, like you could see just here. That list of fuses, as I said, is just inside this door. So you've got your 12 volt fuse on the left hand side and your 240 trip switches on the right hand side. So once you've got that yellow valve parallel with the floor, you can open all the taps up on the hot side. As you can see, I've already filled the water system on this particular van, so it's already primed and ready to go. However, you'd open all the taps up on the hot side, come to the control panel above the door and turn on the water pump. Once the water pump's turned on, the water system will start filling up. Once the water system is full, you'll have water running continuously out of every tap on board the caravan. You can then shut each tap off and you'll be able to start warming the water on board the van. Above the door on the left hand side, so you've got the black control panel which is your main uh, controls and your light controls. Above the door you've got your control panel for your heating and hot water. So to turn this control panel on, you'll press the button on the bottom left hand side and the control panel will wake up. At the top here, it'll indicate if you connect it to mains power and you've got the heating on, that the heating pump is running. And on the right hand side, it'll indicate that you've got mains power coming into the van and below that, the current room temperature. If we hit the menu button, it will take us into the options for the caravan. At the top here, you've got minus or plus for your room temperature. Below that, you've got your hot water temperature. So you've got hot water on when it's halfway up and hot water boost when this bar is completely full. Below that, you have the amount of power coming into the caravan. So if you're on a site with mains power, you'll need to select either one, two or three kilowatts if you want to use mains as the power source for the heating and hot water. It will depend on what site you're on to what you set this to. If you ask at the site office when you arrive on site for your holiday, they will be able to advise you of what power source to run this on. If you want to run gas for your heating and hot water, that is also very simple. You hit the gas option on the bottom left hand side here. The light will go green and that means the gas system is igniting or has ignited. Down the bottom of the screen, if it fails to ignite, you'll get a sim uh, the writing gas fail and two exclamation marks at either end. You do have some advanced options in this control panel. If you hit the uh, cog symbol just here. However, for this, we do advise you read the manual. I'm going to go over to the fridge next, which is very simple to use. So you've got power on, on the left hand side. You then got the option to run mains power. So when you connect it to mains on site, and you can use the button on the right hand side to control the fridge temperature. If you want to run the fridge on gas, the fridge will self ignite on gas as long as the gas bottle is turned on. You hit the gas button at the top here. Fridge will go through its lighting procedure. And when it does ignite, this light will say stay solid blue. If it fails to ignite, it'll actually start flashing the blue flame symbol just here. And also the red warning triangle on this side. If it does that and, it, and the gas bottle is turned on and it has gas in it, we'd advise you come to the hob and ignite the hob. Get the gas through to the hob. This is the last point on the gas, gas system. Come back over to the fridge, press the reset button on the top right hand side here, and it will start the igniting process again. Now on gas again, you can control the temperature of the fridge on the button on the right hand side with the thermometer. When you're towing down the road, you can use the fridge as a cool box. So if you want to use the fridge as a cool box, you simply just need to select the 12 volt mode. Once you connect it to your car, you don't have to have the control panels turned on above the door and then it will allow the fridge to kick in as a cool box and it will just work as a cool box so you will not be able to control the temperature of the fridge on the 12 volt system. Microwave, hob, 
grill and oven all work very much like your household appliances no differences at all there um, you'll simply just need to make sure that you connect to, connect to mains power for the microwave to work and the same for the electric ring on the hob now going into the bathroom you have an electric flush on the toilet you have a red indicator light that will let you know when the toilet waste cassette is completely full the toilet seat itself turns for your convenience. However, when you're removing the toilet set from underneath the van, you need to make sure the toilet seat is back in the central position so it allows you to remove that cassette from underneath the van when it is full. Because if the seat is turned, the idea is it will lock the cassette in place so the toilet waste cassette cannot be removed while it's in use. That also goes for if the grey handle below the toilet is in the open position. If that's in the open position, then the, again, it will not allow you to remove that cassette, so you do always need to make sure it's in the central position when you remove the toilet cassette. And you'd also need to make sure it's, um, or we always recommend, sorry, I should say that it's in the closed position when you're not using the toilet. One last thing I'm just going to quickly show you is the underbed storage. To your access to that, you simply lift up the bed, and underneath there, you'll also see the spare wheel for the caravan. So that is the Sterling Elite 570. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company and we'll be more than happy to help. We appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon when you collect your caravan. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.